All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We find ourselves on the Dragonshire map today. The friendly team, Hoggers, Stitches, Li Ming, Kerrigan, and Anduin. The enemy team, Alganis, Lucio, Nazimbo, Gul'dan, and Diablo. We are at a point in our career where I'm ready to pay attention to Hogger. Last time we really played this character was when we were gearing up for the A through Z. I went into that series, or that episode of the series, letting you guys know that I knew very little about Hogger, but I did practice a bunch of games to get ready for that. Well, that's quite a long time ago now, and uh, a lot of time has passed, but Hogger is up for his golden ring soon. So we've been trying to feel out the character a little bit and just see how we like it. Uh, I've tried a couple different builds. Beautiful Kerrigan combo does secure the kill, even with the tanks trying to move in to mess it up after. They are not able to. Nicely done, team. Very nicely done. I've tried a couple builds for Hogger. Um, literally two. We did two practice games leading up to this game. So, I mean, I don't think I'm a pro by any means yet. But I tried one that was focused around his trait, one that's focused around his dynamite. And I think for this particular game, I'm going to continue to throw out stuff for the dynamite. I'm thinking this enemy team might death ball a little bit. If I use my Q ability and knocks back everything in a cone, if that person hits terrain, they're actually going to be stunned for a few moments. So it is a way that we can hard CC some of our opponents. Our W ability throws out the easy throw dynamite, which you could see on the ground. And as we get some more talents, we're going to start to interact with that in a lot of different ways. Our trait is on a 20 second cooldown, allows us to put down a loot hoard that then drops meat that we can heal with. We can use this to block areas. It also counts as terrain for knocking enemies in with the staggering blow if we're feeling so inclined. So in instances like this, we can be pretty disruptful to a team by moving in and just knocking them around a bit with our Q ability. So our E ability turns me into the Tasmanian devil, has me hurtling through everything that I can touch. And if I impact a wall, actually resets the duration of the ability so I can continue to zoom around. We're gonna have to loot hoard here, break it, and not enough time, but we do get a, how much does this actually heal for? When Loot Horde expires or is destroyed, a chunk of meat falls out that can be picked up to restore 3% of my maximum health every four seconds. So it is quite a beefy heal. It's basically like an extra region globe in lane. What I have found is that Hoggart has some of the easiest lane clear I've legitimately ever seen. We're also gonna get Hoggers Joggers here. While above 30 rage, gain 10% increased movement speed and healing. While above 50, increase those bonuses even more. We gain rage just by basically going out and dealing damage to our enemies. If my attacks would land, you would actually see it increase. And if we get out of combat, it does start to descend as well. So one thing I could do to clear lanes quickly is just drop the loot hoard, go in with the spin, throw some dynamite on it. And as you can see, we eat through minions basically like they are nothing. And I was talking about Yorel very recently on how she just doesn't seem to fill the bruiser role to me at all. And I could not imagine trying to lane clear against a character that has self-healing like Hogger, has better lane clear, and then doesn't have a resource that he has to manage. He just gets to do it all for free while Yorel is grasping, ga gasping for mana. Uh, let's throw out the TNT on this guy, interrupt that first channel. We'll E right towards him as well and maybe just keep this going. Although it does look like he is winning this. All I really have to do is put my trait down, get a heal from it, and then we'll continue. Uh, once we hit level 7, I will be able to interact with my... And we'll just roll in. I will be able to interact with my TNT in a new way. Mainly, uh, I can use my Q. Oh, I hope he's not... He is full spider build. He's going for the channel now, but luckily we did retake bottom. We bought enough time. Uh, I can use my Q to create even more dynamite to get these stacks up even faster. So I can position something like this Q 
And then you can see those dynamites actually rip through the rest of the minion wave, increasing our clear even more. Stitches is in the area. I'm going for the channel. And I got it right as Malganus emerged. He's in a bad spot now. Tried to kick him into my base. Instead, sent him down towards the bottom lane. Most of the enemy team is sitting in bot right now. So our objective should rip and tear right through these defenses pretty quickly. If anyone else emerges from here, we're gonna try to kick them back into the base. But as for now, looks like Gul'dan isn't rotating. Maybe we can use that to our advantage. As our Lee Ming continues to soak, the dragon is getting a little low here. Here's the channel just to remove Lucio. And then that eh, looks like it's about it. Sun is setting on that. But we can just bomb and send more towards our adversaries. Notice because it impacted a hero when we sent those bombs back that it got an instant detonation, making that really, really easy to do. Now we're just going to block off terrain here so Diablo can't move that way. He's going to be forced out at the bottom, buy us a little more time. E after him, but that didn't go the way I wanted. <laughs> so we'll just fall back. I'm just going to go back to soaking lanes here, I think. Nothing too worried to worry about, even though Diablo and Lucio are rotating this way. Uh, with Diablo being in vision now. Wait, there's a knockback into the wall to stun. Some TNT damage. One thing I could have done to make that even more secure was throw down a loot horde to stop him from advancing, but I was just a little late on that. Li Ming's doing some great damage, and the orb does secure a kill onto Ghoulish Daniel. We'll stun Malganus into the wall and then set ourselves up for a light bomb stun, actually casting the enemy team's Lucio. We're going to go for the horde bolt here. This is going to allow me to hurl myself through the air to catch up to adversaries like this guy right here. And we just put that down and take care of business. The stun on Lucio into the wall helps us secure that kill as well. And Diablo uses me as a Q target to get out. Now health's a little low, but we just break that, start healing, and then get these. Oh, uh, couldn't get that region glove middle, but that's okay. So uh, basically everyone in chat's been saying it all day, and I think I'm starting to agree with them. Hogger's the better hero. <laughs> I think... He's Fury, F Furry Urel, and I guess Fury Urel too. I Rage is his meter, never mind. It was a bad joke anyway, and I kept trying to make it work. We're gonna let that joke die. Uh, Nazebo likely doesn't know I am here yet, but will soon. So let's make sure we have our loot hoard if we need it. So far, it looks like he's rotated down to the bottom lane. So we'll grab that capture, clear this wave by throwing that back there and then riding on it and continue to make our way down towards our team. We did lose Kerrigan there, so we are outnumbered, but we do have a little map pressure going towards the bottom lane. Enemy team seems pretty composed down there, but if we can get a quick channel, I will try to help out. It looks like this fight is still erupting, though. Stitches does have someone inside the belly, decides to drop them off outside before he gets put to sleep. Hortipult in to just be disruptive here as our health gets swapped out. I'm not feeling too great, but drop that down. Bomb backwards. Amazing healing by Anduin to keep me alive. And we do have a sippy cup we can fall back to. I tried to give myself some healing. I don't think it really worked out. I do want to get this meat before it leaves, but I don't think I even did that. So with this going on down here, really the only thing we're super worried about is Diablo nailing me into some walls. Other than that, I don't think we're too scared. Let me break this down and heal. I'll stand on the point. Kerrigan's trying to defend right now. Diablo's coming back in. We'll get some TNT out there for him. And just like that, we de-escalated the situation in the middle lane. Wonderful. With Malganus moving up, we'll try to chase, but we're put to sleep pretty quickly. That bomb doesn't land where I want it to, so let's send it back the other way. But I couldn't even do that either. Uh, I do want to horde a pull through and just keep these guys in there if I can. Uh, you know what? I will see myself out. So Lucio can fit through that gap, but Diablo can only do it if he jumps through with his Q. We do get a nice gorge onto the enemy team's Malganus that lets us get that numbers advantage that we need using my E to disengage out of the tower. Very close to getting comboed by that Ghoul Dan. I'm going to put a loot horde down in the bottom corner, use it for some health here. Grenade forward. Nice, 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 beautiful takedown. And then I'll see myself out. 
clear that minion wave as we leave as well. I've been looking at talents here, and there is an auto attack build for Hogger, but very few people actually take Bloodlust. It seems like the mandatory talent at 13 is this one where you take Pummel, and then using your E ability lowers ability power of your adversaries just a little bit. Well, 30% as you move through them. Uh, I have been trying to get good value out of this. I don't think I've, I'm great at it yet or anything. Nazimbo's chasing quite a ways here. Let's cut off his escape with this. Continue to chase. He's down. Grenade that way. I'm just going to try to hold this while my team is retaking bottom. I have a little more health for myself. Perfect. Now Kerrigan's moving back up to the top lane. Hopefully she can grab that objective up there, but we don't know where Malganus is at the moment. I'm just going to try to keep this middle lane pushing as much as I can in between these objective scrapes, uh, because if we can get mid-low, that opens up so much of the map for us. Kerrigan was taken down up top. Oh, that was a bad one. Uh, which means we're about to have a bunch of people heading towards us, probably. But it's just Malganus and just Lucio coming down from above. There's Diablo now. That's a CC. We just leave after that. Heal for myself. And then I'm coming back down here for this. Easy throw dynamite now instantly detonates, does more damage, and have increased range. Let's block off the exit. Start throwing some dynamite. Just barely missed that stun on Ghoul Dan, that feels kind of bad. Gonna E my way through here, not only for free damage, but reducing the damage they can deal. And now that they're trying to advance on Diablo, who's been pulled away, I'll just fall back for some very quick healing as well. And just like that, we took control of this situation. Middle objective's gonna be open for us soon. And the friendly team does have that XP advantage. But here comes Malganus, and he is mad. We do hit him with a very big combo. He tries to swap health out, but it may have been interrupted. Let's just put this down in his path and see how he likes it as I continue to stay on this point. Dynamite down. Come on. Oh, there it is. Li Ming able to finish off that kill. HP is being swapped, but it wasn't really even that good of a trade. Yes, I did just bring him back into melee range, but I believed in it. The instant throw dynamite did go down and execute Malganus as we go for the channel again. We have it. The friendly team can take it. But the only one over there right now is Anduin. Is he going to be able to get the channel? No, the minions block him. It's okay. This is still fine. This is still fine. We can just push our weight around a little bit here with as many people being dead as there are. That means our team should be able to push into this with a lot of our minions. Beautiful. We'll put one of these down, full heal. I wanna keep pressure up on middle. So the, the general thing you should do is take middle down and then rotate to the bottom lane. Top lane's the worst lane on this map to push because, number one, fighting on these bridges is terrifying. And secondly, there's more win conditions with mercenary camps down here in the bottom lane. So you take middle just to alleviate some pressure on the map and then go for bottom. Because we didn't do it the dragon, we didn't do that with the dragon, I'll try to hit it now. Doesn't matter how it dies, just matters that it does. We are being flanked. I do have a get out of jail free card, I'm pretty sure but we don't want to give Diablo free wall bangs on us if we can avoid it. I, wow, okay. I think that's fine. Trying to peel. Oh, the hook was so close. The light bomb goes out. It does connect. I just don't see a, I don't see how he's even still alive much less how you make that situation better, but a Malganus reset might be part of the answer. Nazimbo rotating down. Let's try to get some TNT on him. We do miss by just a sliver. Um, so if Stitches hooks, and it's a good one, I could Looterang behind them after, or maybe I just do it now. Nope. I repeat, doing it now was not the play. Doing it now was not the play. Uh, last game, I was I was running with some talents that made it so any of my loot hordes also slowed and did damage around them. And I think I channeled a little bit of my last game talent energy 
into this one. The long range hook does connect, but it's after the building died. Diablo looked like he was ready for it too, jumping in on Maddie immediately after. Arlene Ming continuing to do a lot of damage here, but Maddie has nowhere to go as zombies lock him down again and spiders get thrown at him. Kerrigan with a nice combo on Diablo does get cleansed as Lucio jumps in with the high five, but it looks like the enemy team's losing a lot of momentum. Here. Okay, my death was definitely not a good one. Okay, now at level 20, we have to go for Secret Stash. Every two seconds, Hortipold's Loot Horde randomly launches Easy Throw Dynamite, prioritizing nearby heroes. Every five seconds, it's going to throw healing at me as well. So playing around these huge Hortipult engages, it's hopefully going to be even more effective now. With the enemy team currently missing from the map, all we see is Malganus up top, and it looks like he swapped health with Stitches pretty recently, as Stitches is very low. The hook does land. I'm going to send in the Hortipult now to hopefully be a little disruptive. I am currently walled. We're trying to make the best of it. Using my E to get... I'm put to sleep! Oh, so much crowd control there. I was basically just locked down. After I tried to help, of course, Maddie's walking out of there, no problem. The enemy team is pushing up on the bridge of death. Kerrigan doing a pretty good job of making sure we are pushing. If they don't respond to this camp here, then they're going to lose a tier two building. And all we lost was a tier one. A uh, good, wait, keep moving. They're gonna have vision. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Very nicely done. Diablo could have engaged over the wall if Manny was too close to this because Nazebo would give him vision on our side of the wall, but it looks like that went very well. We staggered their deaths for at least another 50 seconds, and the objective is in play, so let's not forget that. Kerrigan is on that bottom shrine right now, but it's about to be open for contestion in the middle, and we don't have anyone in the area to deal with this either. Uh, it looks like they're trying to clear out the last couple of minions. We have just a couple seconds, and that's going to be Lucio inside of the dragon. Let's see what he tries to do with it. Looks like they're opting to go down to the bottom lane. If I was in this situation, this, this situation I would go directly for Tier 2 structures rather than the Tier 1, but a 17-minute dragon will push through this pretty quickly. We can use this as an opportunity to just get as many stacks as possible on our easy throw dynamite, but we can also engage really hard, potentially, because the enemy team doesn't have their healer. Uh, oh, Diablo going in on me really hard, stunning me against the wall. I was trying to make my way down to the Sippy Cup, but that didn't work out. Stitches did land a hook, but the high five made it unstoppable. And now a huge fear puts our Anduin into the thick of things. Light Bomb was not enough, was not able to go off. But it looks like... Slowing down for a moment. The hook is out, grabs a minion. Lots of minions heading towards our building right now. Disintegrate being used to get them out of there. Diablo is engaging. The Ultralisk is here and Stitches is caught behind enemy lines. Was it the resurrecting one? That's one of my favorite talents in the game. I think that thing is so cool. Well, level 21 to level 21, deaths are staggered as the enemy team continues to push in. They're getting a lot of ground here, and I'm really not sure we can stop them at this tower. This push may continue. Li Ming doing a great job of poking at this enemy team without committing too hard. I am up. Let's hope I don't intentionally feed. <laughs> Uh, Diablo in tower range is a little tantalizing, but I'm trying not to overcommit to anything. We could have stunned him against the wall just for some extra damage here. Of course, the moment I go to do that, he hits me with an interrupt. I'm just going to drop my horde for some extra loot. As our team is respawning, we're getting a little more confidence here, but I don't think that I should overcommit to this. I'm going to just try to kill off this big thing. And this game will continue. Okay, come on, Gloves, I need you. Come on, Meat, I need you. Okay, 10 seconds on the next objective. Bottom lane is cleared, but it does have another thing coming this way. Friendly team is doing a great job of getting some pressure against our enemies right now, too. So I'll just focus on 
staying alive and staying down here. Although four members of the enemy team have been spotted. So... I'll move up for this. Friendly team is here too. They could very easily turn around and come back towards us though. I, I would imagine they're going to go get top. I think if we could travel as a group, we're going to be fine. Oh, shit. Free. This is free. This is free. They can't respond to this. They're too far. Yes, this is a good play. Kerrigan sees him. Dynamite's out. I'm going to put my first horde down. Break it for healing. I'm jumping way over here. Nice. Okay, so far we've just traded. Anduin did take a very long time to die, to his credit. I'm going to have to heal back here. Break my thing down. We'll keep poking. We'll keep poking. Trying not to overcommit. Kerrigan might be dead. Oh, God. Leaming with big damage here. Oh. oh no, Diablo's coming. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Heal. Heal. Oh, he didn't he didn't commit. That's incredible, actually. I thought he was flanking around above me that entire time. Well, I might be able to clear this. Oh, that was a quick dragon. That's not good. That's not good. And I couldn't clear it. That's not good. I don't think I can stop this on a good day. <laughs> Good try. Good try, boys. Uh, Hogger still needs a little work. He's very overwhelming. I'm not stunning people into walls enough. I'm, I don't think I'm really body blocking with the trait enough either. But this is where we're at. All things have to start somewhere. And we have plenty of room to go on Hogger before we are at the Golden Ring as well. The talents I went for today were, this is so focused on dynamite. This is journeyman's cooking into jo hoggers joggers, dense blasting powder, hortipult, pummel, kablooey, and then secret stash, which makes hortipult launch dynamite of its own. That's gonna do it for today's video, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you again very soon.